Hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible Verse by Verse, a plain and simple study, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse through the entire Bible. We are currently in Genesis chapter 2, and uh, we've been talking about what sin is. How does the Bible define sin? And it's kind of important to understand this because, well, let me tell you, it's not kind of important. It is extremely important to understand this sin and then what is the consequences of sin? Because this is what this is all about, right? This is why Jesus came. This is why man is in the condition that he is in, the spiritual condition that he is in the depravity the sinfulness so we first got had to kind of define what sin is and we go back and go back to that because it's important uh in verse number 16 it says and the lord god commanded the man right so right there is what sin is when you violate God's command. He says, And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat of any tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So what sin is, is first and foremost, God's command. Now, I was going to move on because the, the, what I want to talk about later, and we are going to get into it later, is the consequences of this sin, which is death. And we're going to, I'm going to break that down later on. What is death? But let's kind of go back because I was going to... We did talk about the idea of what the, the, the initial word, English word, sin, and I kind of go back and as the Bible was translated into the English language, but we're talking about some four or five hundred years ago. So the, the word it, it actually comes from the word archery. <laughs> archery. You even think about a bow and arrow. So when you have a, a archery contest and you have a you know a a, a bullseye and you have a bow and angle a bow. An, an arrow and you you shoot the arrow and it misses the bullseye that was called sin however the term as it's used in the Bible of course is much 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 more deeper and so we've been talking about this the what what is sin of course it is violating God's command but it's not only violating God's command. Notice it says that it is um, God when God commands us to do something. Okay. So he commands us and we know that he commands us. In other words, there's no... If we're Adam, there is no confusion in terms of what God commanded him. We see Adam's command, the tree, we know the tree is, and God is very specific. Right? He says, don't eat of the tree of good and evil. He could have eaten of the tree of life. But he said, don't eat of the tree of good and evil. There was no confusion over that. There was no confusion as to what God meant. And we said that this principle of sin that works in us today, uh, and last time we talked, of course, we said that sin was introduced by Lucifer, who sought to overthrow the throne of God, overthrow God, big mistake. Sometime in eternity past, this happened. And as I said, even with the, 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 the idea of darkness, um, the idea of darkness, darkness represents that 
introduction of sin and evil into God's creation. What is interesting is that we know in the future, when God creates a new heavens and earth, there will be no darkness. It will be continual light. I, 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 I often wonder about that now. There are certain parts of the world I would love to see up in the northern, I think it's yeah, northern and south, but up in the north, I know the northern part, there's certain parts of Alaska where there are, um, I think, like 20 hours of, of daylight. And I think if you go to the extreme north and south pole, there's certain times of the year where it is complete daylight. I would love to see that. Now, the other time, there are also times in these parts of the world where there's, there's certain parts where it's complete darkness. I probably would only want to see that for one a day or two and then, okay, get away from there. But um, the, the presence of darkness, even when we see it here as God is creating Earth, the um, universe as we know it, the rotation of the uh, earth, three, 360 days around the sun, but the fact that the universe itself is kind of filled with darkness, right? If you go out in space, of course, most of us will never do that, but you go out in space, it's dark. It's just complete darkness. Um, but that that shows the presence of sin and evil, which will be eradicated in the future. Um, so Adam's sin, sin is not only, in other words, sin is knowing God's command and then rebelling against it. So. It's, it's not like you don't know it. You always know it. You always know it. Um, let me also say this, that sin is not man's opinion. And boy, do you have a lot of that. Uh, most denominations misrepresent God in terms of sin, unfortunately. That there are people who think that they sin against God. And really, you're just sinning against man's interpretation. For example, there are denominations that will tell you that if you drink wine or any alcohol, you are sinning against God. Despite the fact that there's not one scripture that ever tells you you cannot sin. Now, you remember right here where God says this, and I'm, I have to jump ahead a little bit because in chapter 3, what is going to be interesting is that we're going to see the serpent that's going to ask Eve about the command that God had given her about the tree. And she's going to say, well, we can't eat it or touch it. And right there you see this perversion of God's command. But we see the same perversion today in churches. In other words, most denominations pervert God's command. And alcohol is just one of them. You know, alcohol, you cannot do such and such. And oftentimes these commands that come from denominations, these are what men come up with because they don't like whatever. And when you ask a very specific, right, a very specific, what did, where does the Bible say you can't do such and such? And by the way, I'm not, I'm not a drinker. I never drank alcohol. I never smoked, I never drank, I never did drugs. Only because I just didn't like it. I just don't, I don't acquire the taste. So I'm not defending <laughs> Uh, a practice. What I am saying is you have people who are misrepresenting God's command. 
And there's all kinds of people that tell you things like, you know, well, you know, Jesus didn't really drink wine, right? It was fermented versus non-fermented and all that other kind of stuff. No, it is silly men. And we can go on and on and on about men's uh, command. In the cost of churches, women can't wear pants or jewelry or makeup. And if they wear pants, jewelry, or makeup, they think they're sinning. Okay? Um, but we can go on and on and on. There's some people who think if you don't go to church on Sundays that you're sinning. See, that's a misrepresentation of God. And oftentimes people think because I'm not doing these things that I am actually sinning against God. They feel guilty. And they think that they're not pleading to God. Um, but as we see here, let me go back because again, notice what he says. And the Lord God commanded the man. You, there's no question to when God commands us about sin. He says, you are free to eat from any tree of the garden. But you are not, you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That is the command. Uh, the, uh, Eve will say, you can't touch this. Right there you see the, the beginning of religion. <laughs> we'll get we go to that later. But um, it, it's also the same how we think today. That we can't do certain things. And, um, and but, but, but let me also say this. Man in his heart is sinful. So yes, Sometimes we want to rebel against God because, well, we're just rebelling against God. But always, we, we, we should always start with the command, the very specific commands of God. And so whenever religion comes into play, they will invent their own um, command and then say, God is the one Right? God is the one. <laughs> uh, let me take, say this, because I could go off and really, there's so many. Uh, think about communion. That there are churches that um, they have communion. And all, what's funny is that they will tell you that if you, before you have communion, search your heart. Make sure you don't have sin in your heart before God. Now, the reason why I'm kind of saying that is that really the communion is represents Jesus dying for your sins. And oftentimes with these churches, they really miss the actual sin, such as not loving one another. That's the one sin that they never talk about how you treat one another how you actually look at one another so but anyway um, he says here uh, the Lord God first of all, again the Lord God commanded the man you are free to eat from any of the tree but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and on that day that you eat from it, you will certainly die. Now, this term death, and I'm going to get into it obviously in the next study because I'm running out of time here, but the, this is the consequences of sin. And we're going to get into this because what, what does he mean by death here? You will die. Okay? Um, and I'm going to get into that. And I'm going to spend some time on that because... This is what, again, remember, this is what all life is about. This is what our existence is about. And um, and all of this comes because man sinned against God. So then we've got to kind of understand, since Adam sinned, 
and we were born in sin because we were are, are we now responsible for Adam's sin think about that if Adam sinned why am I thousands of years later responsible for Adam's sin why am I destined to hell right why is God punishing me well he's not he's punishing me he's punishing us for our own sin but there is a difference of course and what happened to Adam changed of course the entire course of the world and God's creation uh, I, again I, I'm going to get into that in the next study because I don't have time to get into it there but I'm going to even talk about let's define what death is because this is the consequences here but let's understand how great a consequence this is that God said you will surely die what did that mean let me just say it is not talking about violating a church's command. We're not talking about reform. We're not talking about a mistake. <clears throat> We're talking about actual consequences of sin. But let's understand, we understand what this is. God makes sure, he is, he, he, he is sure to make sure <laughs> Uh, that we understand what this sin is. And I'll say this, that the, the sin today, okay, that uh, causes death, that causes uh, the eternal death, is rejecting God's salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. That's the sin today. And the whole interesting, interesting thing today is why do men reject Jesus? Why, why do men reject Jesus? Jesus himself said this, that men, they do not come to him because they love darkness. In other words, they love their sin. That's in um, John chapter 3. They don't come to him because they don't understand or because they're confused. They don't come to Jesus because they love their darkness. And right there, remember I said that sin is throughout, see, throughout <laughs> the Bible. And Jesus just gave it to us. All right, we're going to pick it up in the, in the next study, guys. And we're going to talk about this consequences of sin. What happens when we sin? This, what, what is death? Adam lived 930 years after he sinned. So what does God mean when he says death? All right, guys, see you in the next study.